Our, uh, the food we intake now for the next 24 hours is really important uh, and also the, uh, the stretching and recovery side of things. Today I um, got the good news that um, my contract's finally been sorted so happy to be uh, a bomber for another four years. Obviously um, a lot of people I think dream of having this job and I wouldn't call it in call it a job. It's um, definitely something you always look forward to every day. I should have known he'd be an hour late. I should have just come here when I went and suited him in. He's always late. He's got to sign an autograph on the way up for sure. Hurry up! Hurry up! How are you, mate? Good. Is this your office? Yes. Yeah, this is, is your office, is it? Okay. okay. After spending so many press conferences next to Kevin as a player, now you're up against him as a coach. Yeah, a little strange, actually nicer to me today than he has been when I was playing. So um, he's uh, always got something up his sleeve, but it's good to be up here playing GWS this week and, and promoting the game in Sydney. You know, it's definitely been a great relationship and you know, I've learned so much off Kevin Sheedy and, and not just um, coaching-wise, but you know, how to play football. Well, what are your strengths, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> You're very quiet, Chief. You've never been this quiet in a press conference before. Uh, uh, you, time for you to talk. I, I just like to hear you. What's Don't that? Keep going. Yeah. What are your strengths? Uh, we've got a couple of good marking forwards and we kick the ball OK. So. Yeah. We want them to walk off the ground tomorrow night and say, oh, mate, this side is going to be really good. We're coming on and uh, that's the way we're looking at the game. When he gives me that stare, I start to worry. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, a very big night here at the opening of Skoda Stadium. Heard versus Sheedy, can't wait. Long ball forward, Ryder. That was far too easy. So Dempsey running hard off half back, and then the class and the poise and the in and unders of the Watson. It's just such a, a really fantastically balanced lineup. Shield runs onto the ball. He can run into an open goal. He kicks the first GWS goal. Cramery, no one between here and the goal. Have a look at this. There's the wide shot. He can go all the way. Can he bounce it and retrieve it? He can. And Cramery will kick the goal. A little kick out of the pack there is affected by Joe Watson. It will be a first up win at Skoda Stadium here for the Essendon Football Club. That man there will be very pleased. Only one loss for the year. You, you got to look at a game in entirety. I'm satisfied that we, we went out and we, we won the game. Um, so I'm satisfied with the whole game from that point of view. Uh, the percentage that we, we did what we exactly want to do, I'm not sure. I have to have a look on the tape. But you, know, you come away from an in-state trip, 71-point victory, you should be pretty happy. First thing that Sheed's taught us when, when I came to the club and every good Kevin Sheedy team has won the ball and, and been really good in the contest and as the game evolves and changes more numbers around here the flood the, the press whatever he he teaches the contested ball and um, it's no coincidence that that's what they're good at and they'll get good at everything else as time comes up. Uh, I haven't spoken to, I've spoken to him every day I think for the last week it seems like we're in uh, that many press conferences so I'm not sure what he's doing tonight but we might catch up later on but it is pretty late and we're all on an early flight so we'll see what happens. Lucky up until half time. Uh, I guess it was an okay win. For us, we were happy to, to have the four points, but at the same time, um, you know, we've got to play better than better than that for four quarters and, and, and really run out games. We, you know, second half was good, first half let ourselves down. This is uh, basically a protein mix. Um, so from now on, we start with our uh, all our recovery type drinks. Um, you know, back into our electrolytes, our protein, our, uh, the food we intake now for the next 24 hours is really important, uh, and also the uh, the stretching and recovery side of things. Looking after me, man. Looking after me. Last quarter. Oh man. Uh, basically what the doc goes around and uh, 
good physio and just checks up on everybody. Um, so any sore spots, um, any knocks, bumps, uh, tight hemis, tight muscles, anything like that, uh, they just note down straight after the game. And then that way, um, tomorrow and the next day, we can really, uh, I guess, make a, make a quicker advantage on, on the recovery process and, and getting the boys up and going for the following week. Pretty calf tightness? Yeah, it's just general soreness. Which one? That's whole body. Whole body tightness. Just draw a stick for you. Whole body tightness. General soreness. You know, it's probably the 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 ocean, the, the the more active things we do, we get the most benefit out of. Um, you can you can take you know we take vitamins, all these type of different I guess pills that you know help with recovery and, and increase your your protein intake. Um, but Mainly, you know, most of it's from flexibility, walking, ocean, hot and colds, uh, that sort of basic stuff. Back to basics. Today, just uh, back into the body moving again. Um, bit of work through calves, hammies, quads. Ticking the boxes, I guess. Getting all the right things done for the next, for next week. It's me nan bought them. So they don't bag me about them, so pink. It's probably the most important part of it, uh, you know, along with stretching and just really getting uh, the, the body uh, up and active again. This morning's pretty cruisy. Um, you know, we've got a few things we will do this and uh, you know, we're doing the stretching as well at the moment. So once we do that, we'll have a big feed, big breakfast, and um, yeah, like I said, it's pretty uh, pretty easy day. But you know, most of the boys are pretty sore and and, uh, and probably not doing too much moving for the next two days. Morning, Mum. What's for breakfast? Morning. Bacon and eggs. Lovely. Thank you. Do you have much on at the club today? Got a bit of skills with the younger boys uh, today at about 10.30. Got to get in there and do some extras and a bit of recovery after that. This is a photograph of Elliot and James when he was six years old. When Elliot was around this age and even a little bit younger. He would um, play football, kick to himself in the backyard. And when he did that, he was always Elliot Heard. Uh, we're off to Windy Hill this morning. Obviously, um, a lot of people I think dream of having this job and I wouldn't call it in, call it a job. It's um, definitely something you always look forward to every day. I guess um, growing up in, obviously going to school over at Penland Essendon Grammar, I've kind of been over in Essendon since about year nine, so I've kind of gone over, had a kick to kick there with mates and that kind of stuff. And I haven't really taken in that that's where they actually used to play and all the history behind it until before they got drafted. Selection 19, Essendon. Player 212125, Elliot Kavanagh Western Jets and Williamstown Juniors. As a 16 year old, he was touted as being one of the early picks in, in the draft, but uh, unfortunately suffered some hamstring injuries last year. And uh, that put a bit of doubt in, in some of the club's minds. Um, it didn't phase us at all. Um, and in fact, he's been here for, for what, seven or eight months now and hasn't missed a beat. So um, he's had no no problems with his hamstrings and his game uh, intensity has increased, game loads. Uh, he had 20 plus possessions on the weekend and kicked three goals, so we're really happy with the way he's progressing. Yeah, he's a good fella. He's um, got a dry sense of humour. He's always coming up and saying hello. Um, you know, he's shy, he's quiet, but uh, he's got a lot of self-belief and that's what we like about him. Fortunately, the team's going really well and there's a number of boys fighting for, for spots, which is a, a great position to be in. Look, it wouldn't surprise me if we got a game later on in the year. Come on, Piggy. Yeah, there, Piggy. Oh, yeah. Rocky himself. Rocky's right there. Obviously, all the younger ones get in and put their hands in the footy. Obviously, put, them, put themselves a step ahead of everyone else. Yeah, it goes well. And obviously, improving your skills and skill set and obviously, reaction time. I guess, yeah, you've got to put yourself in the best spot to get, get an opportunity at the top level. And I think um, last year and this year have obviously put me in the best, best spot too, to do that, obviously, after the injury. But, yeah, I was just looking ahead and obviously trying to put my best foot forward in the VFL. Yeah, 
um, I grew up always bagging for the Bombers and um, obviously followed James Hurd, Michael Long. But yeah, obviously as a player I have to get over that and to see him as my coach and yeah, obviously just take everything he has to say in and play good footy for Bendigo and hopefully get a crack at the big time sometime in the near future. We know that when, when Paddy plays really well, we're almost impossible to beat. Um, his quality of football so far this year has shown that he's, he's soon to be one of the best players in the competition. Contract's finally been sorted, so happy to be uh, a bomber for another four years. Look at Paddy. Three first quarter goals. I love this place and, and everyone everyone that's involved in this footy club. I've got uh, great mates here and um, you know the coaches um, I really look up to. So um, you know, living in Melbourne um, isn't too bad. <laughs> I'd prefer to be probably close to my family, but um, you know I, I really love this place. Um, yeah, dearly. Paddy Wright is a fantastic talent and uh, an integral part of our team and is a really important part of our team and our culture. So, uh, yeah, it's very exciting for the SM Football Club to have Paddy um, stay for another four years. As important as anyone, and, you know, we know that when, when Paddy plays really well, we're almost impossible to beat. Um, his quality of football so far this year has shown that he's, he's soon to be one of the best players in the competition. Goodness gracious me! Paddy Wright! Great to be on board for another four years. Go the Bombers. Jason Winderlich joins me in the Hangar studio on the back of the great news that Paddy Ryder just put pen to paper there on a four-year deal. Yeah, sensational. Um, obviously, we got Hurls to sign for the five years earlier on, and Paddy's another integral part of the spine. Uh, we've got Fletch. Um, who's still playing in the back line, but it's important to keep all your great key position players um, at the club. Four years is pretty substantial. It feels like we're seeing longer-term deals back in vogue. I think for those two two guys, they're just such special players. Like they're both first-round draft picks. Um, Paddy, there was a lot of pressure on him early on, but I think you've seen as the team's blossomed around him and developed, it's, it's helped his football as well. So there's not much of a, of a reliance on him now to dominate games. There's a lot of guys who, like Cramery coming on in the forward line as well, it takes a bit of pressure off him. And Jason, you'll be pleased to know you can get Paddy's number 30 on your Bombers jumper for free at the Bombers shop next week. Now, you're an Essendon fan growing up. Whose number did you have on your back? Uh, number two, Mark McCurry was my favourite. Just such a smooth mover um, across half forward line. So when I was kicking the balloon through the through the doors at home, I was always Mark McCurry. So it was fantastic to watch. Is there anyone on the Essendon list that wasn't a Bombers fan growing up? Because it seems every week we have someone coming in here. And <laughs> they all, is that just what you're saying to win favour with the coach? Oh, I think a few boys have with Zach, like Zacha and Heppel. But um, but I think Jakey Malcolm's the only one I can think of. He, I think he was a kangaroo supporter. So other than that, I think most guys are red and black. Well, what about you, Jason? How are you doing after after that horrible knee injury and a few setbacks along the way? Yeah, it's um, it's been a long process, a lot longer than what I would have hoped for, especially um, now that you see the team's going so well. It's not real nice watching that again. But, um, but yeah, like I, my knee's absolutely fine, which is I'm wrapped about. It's just I've had a bit of hamstring trouble since then I had a hamstring graft um, reconstruction so they cut a little piece of your hamstring out to fix your knee um, but since then I've just had a little bit of trouble running it at um, really top end speed so I've done heaps of running um, up to 95% it's just when I try and get that last little bit that I'm having a little bit of trouble. That ill-fated day we also saw Courtney Dempsey go down with also an ACL injury and you would have yeah. recovered and rehabbed together seeing his return is it inspiring is it frustrating what are, what are your emotions at the moment? Oh, I'm wrapped for Courtney. He's um, such an important part, um, a part of our team and our back line. And, um, yeah, it's, you're just happy for guys. Like, you'd, you'd hate seeing injuries like all the Collingwood guys who've done their knees this year. Lenny Hayes last year is like, my favourite player to watch now. And to see the way he's come back as well, that you have great confidence that your knee's going to be fine uh, when you get out and play. And Courtney, Lenny, and I'm sure when the Collingwood boys come back as well that um, everything will be fine. You were third in the best and fairest in 2010, using your speed to full advantage. You obviously hope that that's still going to be there 
there when you do return, when you do make it back? Yeah, definitely. I expect it to be um, still there. When I do have been running, um, doing the testing and stuff, when I've, I've progressed well through my hamstring rehab, um, all the, the times and that have been set are exactly the same as what I used to be able to do. So it's just a matter of being able to do them continuously under fatigue because that's generally when you do do a hamstring is when, you, when your body's under fatigue. So I've just got to get that conditioning in at that top level for a few weeks and, and that way it'll be able to sustain it in a game. Each week your votes on EssendonFC.com.au decide the True Value Bomber of the round. This week's nominations were an inspirational Joe Watson winning his own ball and converting it as well. Look at the core strength here of the Essendon captain. Off balance, still enough composure to get boot to ball. He's a superstar of the game now, Joe Watson. Make no mistake about it. Tom Bell Chambers marking power and sharp shooting up front. Here he is. Looking to extend the margin above the 60 point margin and gets that home. Bombers lead it by 63. Bell Chambers has three. And the healing hands of the Essendon physios. Just minutes after Stuart Cramery sent a scare through the camp, he was back on the park moving better than ever. Out in front here of Cramery. No one between here and the goal. Have a look at this. Can he bounce it and retrieve it? He can. And Cramery will kick the goal. And congratulations to Jeff Cliff, who correctly selected Big Tom as this week's TVB. Jeff now goes into the season-ending draw to win a True Value Solar Energy System valued at $3,000. See EssendonFC.com.au for full details. I was a recipient of the handball from Blumfield. Um, I think it just scraped through. I actually thought it hit the post. Pretty privileged and honoured, and uh, a bit surprised to obviously get this award. But um, yeah, I'll take it any day of the week, and I'm pretty happy that you know I'm, I'm fortunate to win it. I actually played midfield. I was a little midget, you know, of the kids. So um, yeah, I tried running around, um, and then you yeah, obviously played a bit of forward. Um, and then as I obviously grew, um, about 16, 17, um, you know, I tried to play forward, and then from then on. But I don't mind down back. Down back's pretty good, enjoyable. Um, obviously, love playing there with uh, Dustin Fletcher and. Um, I think the forward line at the moment is pretty good with you know Stewie Hills and Paddy up there. So um, you know I'll take any opportunity I get, um, whether it's forward or back. I you know, really don't mind. So. Hi, Paul Barnard here. It's every player's dream to play in a winning grand final, and I was lucky enough to be part of the all-conquering Bombers 2000 Premiership team. Uh, running out onto the ground um, was just unbelievable. Uh, the atmosphere was, it was electric. Uh, you're playing on the biggest stage at the highest level in, in Australian rules football. So uh, there's a fair element of pressure, but can I tell you, it was, uh, it was a dream come true to even make it to a grand final. And the, and the, uh, the atmosphere, as I said, was, was absolutely electric. Coming on in the second quarter, uh, was was uh, quite a thrill. And I was a recipient of the handball from Blumfield. Um, I think it just scraped through. I actually thought it hit the post. <laughs> and the second goal was the most unbelievable act I've ever been a part of, and that was on the end of a handball from Darren Buick, who uh, hadn't handballed to date in his 11-year career. So uh, you can imagine when I received the ball uh, how much of a shock it was. So I think I just kicked it because in shock and it happened to go through. <laughs> And then on my third goal, I think I received a kick from uh, Michael Long. Uh, it just happened to be uh, in the right spot. I think it was uh, not meant for me initially, but uh, I got it anyway. But uh, lucky enough, as I said, to kick the third goal. She'd be proud of Paul because he's kicked two goals already. So it is dad, David, who played for East Perth as a rover. And he's kicked three. Uh, and then the fourth goal was uh, on the end of a John Barnes kick uh, that he sent it through. I did notice Sean Wellman was on my left shoulder running down for the back line but uh, he didn't receive the handball from me and I, I kicked and hope and, and it happened to go through from a fourth goal. 49 metres out, he's enjoyed the goal today and he's got another one after the fourth. And then not too long after that uh, the final siren had gone so we were pretty pleased to, to achieve a, a dream that to this day is still from a sporting perspective, is still my greatest achievement. I do remember looking over and, and 
seeing Dean Rioli's face, who was part of our team throughout the year, but unfortunately injury crueled him. And, but we all think that he was part of it to this day. Um, he, does, he may not have a Premiership medal, but he was certainly part of the team. And all those players, uh, to be in that family of, of footballers to, to achieve success in the 16th flag for the Essen Footy Club. Uh, what am I up to now? I'm uh, General Manager of the Essendonians, uh, which is a coterie group uh, that sits behind the Essendon Football Club. We basically uh, offer support and mentorship for the players and staff and coaches. Um, we assist the club from a fiscal point of view um, and generally just be the faceless men behind the, the footy club. You've got a couple of boys, both under the father-son, so all the red and black army out there will be happy if they're good enough. Curtis is 11, he plays at Aberfeldy and Luke is seven, who's doing Auskick at Aberfeldy at the moment. We were never really, in our own minds, wanted to do anything else but win that flag, and that flag was ours. Uh, and we worked so hard to, to achieve that goal, and um, we were fortunate enough to, to do that. Number 16, Paul Barra. Jason Winderlich is our studio guest. Now it's time for our home truth question this week. And it is from Damien. What is the best piece of advice you've been given and why? Um, probably just try your best. Uh, it's pretty simple and, and boring, but that's all you can do. Um, yeah, I was always taught that um, from my dad, um, especially playing sport. It was like if we if we'd play against a team that we're expected to win, um, I played well, he wasn't that happy, um, as opposed to when we played against the, the harder teams um, and you'd play well. So just try your best, um, especially young kids growing up, that's all you need to do. Well, well done to Damien. You win the $500 antler luggage prize pack. Congratulations. Well, Jason, you and your fiance Katie, are expecting a little bub at the end of footy season. Do you yep. need any advice on that, perhaps? Uh, no, no, I think I'm all right. Um, yeah, we're having a little girl, so we're very excited uh, about that, due on October 11, which is the day after my birthday. So very excited. Hopefully um, we can have some success at the football club um, throughout the later part of the year. And then, um, yeah, in my time off, I think I'm going to be very busy now. And mix in with that planning a wedding as well. Yes, yes. So we are um, looking forward to those two special days. Well, we need to talk about the Bombers' form so far this year. We know you're trying to work your way into the side. It's going to be a hard side to crack into because the boys are playing really consistent football. Yes, yes. Like They've been terrific so far uh, for the first start of the year. And um, just from watching even the last um, half of last year and, and the start of this year, um, there's guys now who play are playing in the VFL that could could easily come in and play a role within the team. I think that's what's great at the moment. We've had some soft tissue injuries at the start of the year, but as the, the squad's getting back to large numbers now, um, puts great pressure on the, the guys who are in the team. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the challenge uh, myself on, on trying to get back in. What about the midfield brigade of Joe Botson and David Zaharakis, the reigning best and fairest? They're doing it in style at the moment. Yeah, it's been great. Like, Zaka had a little bit of a slow start to the year, but I think his last five weeks, he's probably averaged about 28 to 30 touches, but it's more his, um, his efficiency when he uses the ball by foot. He's such a great kick. Um, you know, I love leading to him if I'm ahead of the ball because he's a beautiful kick. And then obviously Job's just, he's probably the best playmaker um, in the competition at the moment. So I'm sure those guys lick their lips when he gets it inside the contest. Given a lot has changed since you last played and, and the team has developed as well, do you expect your role to change a little bit when you do work your way back in? Um, my role changed after 2010 um, when I first started last year. I played that more defensive um, half forward role or high half forward and I really enjoy it. It's, a, it's got a massive work rate that you need to have. You need to get up the ground, get back, um, put pressure on now. You see a lot of the small forwards um, this year have been terrific for us in, in Leroy and the Froggy Davy. So I, I can't wait to yeah, get back in and, and hopefully play that role again. And you're stranded on 98 games at the moment as well. Yeah, yeah. I think our old footy manager jinxed me. Um, um, like last year, um, just the, the week leading up to the Carlton game, he gave me a, a box of, of boots. He goes, oh, here's your new boots. And I'm like, oh, what are these? Uh, I opened it up and it had the 100 games embroidered on them. Oh. I said, oh, come on, you just jinxed me for sure. So I gave them back to him and then, yeah, did my knee on the weekend. So I wasn't happy about that. Well, that's not a very good story, <laughs> but we certainly hope no. to see you back out there very soon. And also good luck to your teammates for the big game against Melbourne this yeah. weekend. Thanks very much, Sarah. Skip Thompson here from Kia. Here's how Joe Watson thinks the rookies are stacking up. 
So, Joe, we've got uh, six brand new rookies this year. How are they looking? Yeah, Lachlan Dalgleish. Uh, he's from up in um, Ararat, actually, in uh, the Western District. So, um, he's uh, he's a pretty skinny kid when he arrived, but um, lightning quick. Corey's uh, about a 22-year-old from uh, the Waffle. Played at South Fremantle. Kicked. Uh, I think he kicked about 60 goals last year and um, he's a, a pretty dangerous, dynamic forward, small forward. Yeah, so Anthony was on our senior list last year and he was uh, had some terrible injuries with his hamstring, so they've put him back onto the rookie list and uh, his pre-season's been going really well. His hamstring strength's improved. I look forward to talking to you again uh, just to see how the boys are going. I'll give you a regular update. Great. This has been a Fox Footy production.